Finding a reliable mobile ham radio without spending a fortune can be a challenge, but I'm here to help. Today, I'm reviewing the top three cheap mobile ham radios, and I discuss all their key features and what things to consider before you pick the best one for you. Trust me, you'll want to stay with me till the end to make a wise and informed choice. Price information and all ham radios mentioned in the video are available in the description. So let's get started. Number three, QYT KT 8900D. The QYT KT 8900D is one of the most budget friendly mobile ham radios on the market. If you're looking to get on the air without breaking the bank, this little rig might just be what you're looking for. But as with any budget gear, there are some trade offs to consider. First off, the size of the radio is fantastic. It's incredibly compact, making it perfect for mobile setups where space is a premium. This thing can fit almost anywhere, whether it's in your car's glove box or mounted on a Jeep's soft top cabin. The compact size also makes it an excellent candidate for a go box or go bag setup. One standard feature is the quad watch capability, which allows you to monitor up to four channels simultaneously. It's a bit tricky to get used to, and it's not quite the same as having four separate radios, but for those of us who like to keep an ear on multiple frequencies, it's a handy feature. However, let's get into the nitty gritty, since as with any budget gear, there are some trade-offs to consider. One of the major downsides is the build quality. Over time, users have reported issues like knobs falling off and intermittent issues that seem to be due to sloppy soldering inside the unit. Some units have also shown a tendency to overheat, especially during long transmissions, so it's advisable to use at a medium power to prolong its life. Additionally, programming this radio can be a headache. The software that comes with it is often buggy and poorly translated, making it difficult to set up without external help. Fortunately, the KT8900D is Chirp compatible, which is a lifesaver and significantly simplifies the programming process. In terms of performance, the radio does a decent job, especially for repeater operation. It's not the most selective radio, meaning you might experience some intermodulation or overload in RF-rich urban areas. For those in rural areas, it tends to perform better. The receiver is quite sensitive, but that can sometimes be a double-edged sword as it picks up a lot of noise and interference. One common complaint is the microphone quality. The stock mic feels cheap, and the audio reports can be hit or miss, with some users describing the audio as muffled or too low. So you might have to modify the mic to get better performance or replace it entirely. Now let's compare it with other budget options. Radios like the Anytone AT778UV offer better received performance and a more intuitive user interface, albeit at a slightly higher price. The KT8900D's main advantage remains its price point. For under $100, it packs in a lot of features, but you definitely get what you pay for in terms of durability and ease of use. To wrap it up, the QYT KT8900D is a solid entry-level mobile ham radio. It's not without its flaws, but if you're on a tight budget, and needs something to get you on the air, it's worth considering. Just be prepared for some of the quirks and potential issues down the line. Number 2. BTEC UV25X4 BTEC UV25X4 is a compact and versatile quad-band mobile ham radio that's very popular among budget-conscious hams. But is it really the best cheap mobile ham radio? Let's see why it stands out and where it falls short compared to its competitors. First off, the BTEC UV25X4 covers the 2 meter, 220, and 440 megahertz bands, plus a 350 to 390 megahertz band usable only in Asia. It's marked as a 25 watt radio, but in reality, the power output varies around 23 watts on 2 meter, 24 watts on 220 megahertz, and 20.5 watts on 440 megahertz. It's a bit under the peak power claim, but still reasonable for most practical uses. The compact size of this radio is a major plus, making it easy to mount in your vehicle or even set up as a home base station. Installation is straightforward with the included mounting hardware and the option to use a cigarette lighter plug for power, making it highly portable. Another standout feature is its enhanced audio input output capabilities through an RJ45 microphone port 
and a K1 audio adapter, allowing access to a wide range of aftermarket audio accessories. The built-in speaker is impressively loud, though it can get overloaded at high volumes. On the downside, some users report that the BTEC UV25X4 can stop transmitting after extended use, particularly if the fan isn't kept clean or if the rig isn't well ventilated. This can be a significant issue if you're planning long QSOs or using it during events. Comparing it to the QYT KT7900D, which is another budget-friendly option, the BTEC UV25X4 has slightly better sensitivity on the 220 MHz band. However, both radios can only monitor one frequency at a time, despite displaying multiple channels, which might feel limiting if you're used to true dual VFO radios. Another highlight is the BTEC UV25X4's OLED display. It's bright, sharp, and customizable, making it easy to read in various lighting conditions. But beware! The relay click sound when switching bands might drive some users crazy, especially if you frequently scan through different frequencies. Programming the radio can be done using Chirp software, which is free and quite user-friendly. However, if you prefer a more straightforward approach and don't mind spending extra, the RT system software is an option, though it might feel overpriced for a budget radio. In terms of build quality, the BTEC UV25X4 is decent for the price, but has some quirks. For example, the speaker jack requires a special four-conductor plug instead of a standard two-conductor one, which can be convenient. Also, the radio can be susceptible to interference if placed near HF, CB, or 6-meter antennas, causing it to freak out with loud spurts and growls. Overall, the BTEC UV25X4 is a solid choice for those entering the ham radio hobby or needing an inexpensive rig for their vehicle or home. It's not perfect and has some notable drawbacks, but for around $130, it offers features and performance that were once only available in much pricier models. Number 1. Anytone AT778UV Anytone AT778UV is an affordable mobile ham radio that's been quite popular in the amateur radio community. If you're looking for a budget-friendly dual-band radio, stick around, because this one might just surprise you. First off, let's talk about the price. It's around $120 to $130. The Anytone AT778 is significantly cheaper than most offerings from big brands like Yesu, Icom, and Kenwood. This makes it an excellent option for beginners or anyone needing a reliable secondary radio without breaking the bank. The build quality of the radio is impressive for its price. It feels robust and well-made, and its compact size makes it ideal for both mobile and stationary setups. Whether in your car or your shack, it fits easily without taking up much space. Many users have praised its sturdy construction, which as discussed for the previous options is not always the case with budget radios. When it comes to audio performance, the AT778UV delivers clear transmit and receive audio. Users have reported that their transmissions are crisp and easy to understand. The receive audio is also good, though it might not be as resistant to interference as higher-end models like the Yaesu FT8800. One thing to note is that the signal strength meter or S-meter can be a bit overly optimistic in its readings, but overall, the audio quality is commendable for the price. The Anytone AT778UV packs a lot of features into its small frame. It supports dual-band functionality, covering both VHF and UHF, and displays input voltage constantly, which is useful for monitoring your power status. However, a significant drawback is the user interface. The radio lacks a dedicated volume knob, which can be inconvenient. Adjusting the volume requires using a function key, which isn't as intuitive as a simple knob. Programming the AT778UV can also be challenging if done manually, mainly due to the poorly written manual. However, the radio supports Chirp software, which simplifies the process significantly. So I would recommend using Chirp or similar software to avoid the headaches of manual programming. A notable issue with the AT778UV is heat management. The radio can get quite hot during extended transmissions as it lacks a built-in cooling fan. This option could be a problem if you plan to use the radio for long periods. Adding an external fan might be necessary to prevent overheating. 
when compared to other budget radios like the TYT TH8600 and the QYT KT8900D, the Anytone AT778UV holds its ground well. It offers better audio quality and more reliable performance, though it shares some common issues such as clunky squelch control and a somewhat confusing user interface. In conclusion, the Anytone AT778UV is a fantastic budget-friendly option for those new to ham radio or anyone needing a reliable secondary unit. It offers great value for the money, decent performance, and a robust build. While it has its quirks, such as the lack of a volume knob and heat management issues, these are minor inconveniences compared to the overall benefits. If you're looking to get on the air without spending a fortune, the AT778UV is definitely worth considering. So what do you think? Which of these is the best budget mobile ham radio for you? Or do you think another mobile ham radio is better? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Have an awesome day.